Another essential tool you're going to need for any kind of earthworks is some kind of a contour map. One of the easiest ways to get a contour map for your property is to visit contourmapgenerator.com. So this is a, a program that myself and my colleagues at Verge Permaculture put together. And essentially it just leverages open source data that's available all over the world and integrates it into this automated program that helps you to create a contour map for any property of any size anywhere in the world. So the first step is just to go out and, and locate your property, uh, figure out um, uh, you know wh where your boundaries are, how big you want your map to be. I would suggest you make the map as as large as you as you possibly can, uh, you know with within reason. Uh, you can actually hit the preview button. You can see what the contour lines are like, uh, and if you want to go ahead, you can you can generate the map and see there's there's several different mapping packages uh, ranging from just the simple uh, contour lines all the way up to nine different layers like slope, aspect, hill shade, uh, and, and watershed analysis. And then you can go ahead and throw in your email address and uh, it takes you to our, our payment gateway. Now, one of the downsides of this website, contourmapgenerator.com, is that the, the accuracy of the data varies where you are on the world. And so in our FAQ uh, section of the website, there's a tab called how good is the map data and resolution. And if you click on the link in there, you'll see a map of the entire world that shows where the, the data is really good, uh, which is basically in the areas where it's, you know, uh, three meter or 10 meter accuracy and where it's, it's not so great. Another option for creating a contour map, if for whatever reason the data at contourmapgenerator.com isn't great, is to use a third party program like Maps Made Easy, where you can just download an app and uh, uh, hook it up to a, uh, a drone that works with that particular software. Uh, and you basically fly a, uh, a predetermined path on your property and, uh, and you can use that data to uh, get a really nice uh, uh, stitch photo of, of your property. Uh, but you can also use that same data to create, uh, if, you, if you know somebody who can develop it, like a GIS developer, you can use that data to actually develop really accurate uh, contour maps. Another option for creating a contour map is to purchase ready-made data from some kind of a third party, uh, like Vaultus here, which who sells LiDAR data, which is basically topographical data that is gathered by planes that fly over uh, an area uh, and shoot lasers down at the ground and measure the time it takes those lasers to bounce back. And so uh, this is a company that I've used several times in, in areas where the data isn't great for contramapgenerator.com. Um, and so you can actually see uh, in you know various areas all around the world, they do have data uh, available in the states as well. And there's other companies, I'm sure, all around the world that uh, that you could get good data as well. But um, essentially, that you can you can basically find your property uh, wherever you are in uh, in the world. Uh, you know, see uh, how good the data is, and and go through the steps. So to to put this into perspective, however, the uh, the data that I purchased for our uh, uh, home quarter, uh, which is 160 acres, uh, that data alone costs about $500. Uh, plus, then I have to, you know, send it to a, a third-party GIS developer uh, who can turn that data into something, uh, you know, usable with uh, in terms of a contour map, uh, which can range from you know hundreds to thousands of dollars. So the, the very first contour map that I ever purchased for my property actually cost me over fifteen hundred dollars uh, just for a, a a printed laminated map um, versus you know uh, with uh, contourmapgenerator.com you can get one for uh, you know thirty to uh, you know two hundred dollars uh, and, and the size can be uh, virtually unlimited. Once you've found a source for accurate topographical data, uh, whether that's through our website or you're flying it with your own drone or you're using a third-party data program like Vaultis or some, some other company somewhere else in the world or you're using just regular you know, survey equipment yourself or you're hiring a survey company, uh, you know, those options can vary from you know, uh, uh, you know, a few dollars to thousands of dollars. And again, depending where you are on the planet, it's your options are, are going to vary. But um, the the goal is to get as accurate of topographical data or contra contra maps as possible, because those contra maps essentially um, are the 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 language of the landscape. And uh, and once you've got those topographical data, the, the next tool. 
that I cannot recommend enough is a program called Google Earth Pro. So this is a JS tool that um, allows you to do all kinds of amazing stuff. Uh, and it is, it is just indispensable when it comes to doing earthworks design and and just property design in in general but i'm i'm going to focus on on its its uh uses for uh for designing things like dams and swales here uh, on our 250 acre farm in in central alberta so as i mentioned you know i used to i used to do all my design work with laminated markers or sorry, laminated maps and uh, and erasable markers and then take pictures of them uh, it was it was uh, really arduous it was really difficult to uh, to iterate my designs because it would take hours to draw something out and then in order to to uh to draw something new i would have to erase everything that i'd done so i took photos and i would compare them back and forth but with uh with with a tool like this uh i can uh, I can bring in, you know, those contour maps. Uh, you know, this is, for example, some of the data that I got off uh, contourmapgenerator.com, what, where the the um, uh, uh, inputting actually some of my own my own data into that same program, because uh, the data for our farm w wasn't very good. So I actually used that original data that I purchased for, you know, fifteen hundred dollars years ago, and I and I ran it through our same uh, contour map generator uh, program. And I was able to uh, create this just absolutely incredible contour map for our property that came with uh, things like aspect maps, uh, slope maps, uh, uh, things like uh, you know uh, river base uh, river basin, which basically shows uh, you know what part of the the catchment you are in your your greater watershed. Uh, they also come with uh, another amazing. Uh, layer that's super super useful uh, which is I'll turn off the uh, the contour lines here uh, this is a uh, a, a watershed map uh, map or a catchment map which basically shows where all the valleys are on your property and you can you can really see you know where the water uh, uh, congregates together uh, you know those are the typ typically the best places in the landscape to build dams and it just so happens that's where I built them now I had done all this design work without any of these uh, extra layers because all I had uh, originally for my for my designs that I did you know 10 years ago was just those laminated maps however um, it I, I had to map out all this other stuff you know manually and draw all these water lines on myself to, to really visualize where the water was going to flow and and what was the best way to um, to capture that so that th this is some of the stuff that you get uh, with the advanced mapping package or if you just if you want to do all this stuff manually yourself you can just purchase the uh just the, the plain old contour lines and uh and uh and for for 30 bucks so uh with with that being said once you've got your 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 contour map uh data whether it is again from from our mapping program or or anywhere else uh you want to find some way to get it into google earth pro ideally you're going to uh, do that by uh, having some kind of a, uh, a KML file, which is a file that's created specifically for Google Earth Pro. However, you can also just take, you know, regular photos. So for example, this is actually an aerial photo that I took with my drone uh, of our farm that's that's laid out underneath the, the contour lines because you can see the data uh, or the, the Google Earth Pro uh, 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 photo is not great for where our farm is. So I actually took my own photo, which is another really great use for a drone. But with that, with that same uh, flight path with my drone, I, I also uh, was able to gather uh, topographical data. And if you send that to a developer, they can turn that into a contour map that is basically just as accurate as this. So there's a, there's a bunch of different ways to skin that, that contour map cat. But once you've got it skinned, you want to lay it out in this program because this is and this is where you know the, the rubber really hits the road is um you know the all the downsides that you have with with laminated maps or, or drawing stuff out um by hand in terms of you know uh, it takes a long time you know it's easy to smudge you, you can't be uh, adaptive because you you have to create you know multiple copies and it's expensive this program is completely free uh once you get your your data in here and what it allows you to do is create uh, different options. So, you know, I can, for example, you know, I can say, oh, well, you know, what, uh, uh, what would happen if I, uh, if I made my contour, or if, if I wanted to go up to this contour line over here, you know, and I can move all these dots up 
and uh, and I can edit it that way. Or if I don't like that, you know, I can I can just cancel that and it goes back to where it was. Or I say, you know, what if I uh, actually this is something I'll cover later uh, on the on the video is is when I was designing this particular dam here. Let me just move over a bit. When I was designing this particular dam here, I was trying to figure out, you know, how I uh, doing my calculations, how how big of a of a excavated material I would need here to build this dam wall, and I wasn't sure. And so, you know, I can play around with the length. You know, do I want to make it, you know, 200 feet long or uh, 250 feet long, right? And so, I can I can easily just uh, adjust those. Or another option is I can actually create multiple versions of the same dam. And I can play option land. So it's okay. Well, what if I uh, built, you know, this kind of a dam, and I, I had the dam wall running from, you know, from this valley uh, across this valley to uh, uh, between these two ridges, or you know, what if I made it uh, like this? You know, I, I made it a little bit longer, uh, and what if I made it, uh, you know, totally differently in a, in, a, in a different shape in a different direction? You know, how's that going to affect how my earth mover is going to have to move, uh, or if I made it, you know, quite small further down the landscape? Uh, and uh, here's another option that I, I was playing around with that was that was really far down the landscape and it had kind of a, a u-shaped dam wall and so all of these things like you know these these different versions here these six different versions took me dozens of hours to create however if, if I had to create you know those different versions with those those uh, laminated maps that you saw before it, it would have taken me you know probably over a hundred hours to do that same work and I wouldn't have done nearly as good of a job and I would have been in a much worse mood at the end of it. So the, you know, the, 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 that early kind of mainframe design that I created with, with those laminated maps, um, the, you know, it, it laid out kind of the broad brush strokes of what all the, all the really good dam locations on our property. Um, but you know, luckily I was able to find this program, Google Earth Pro, and and start that to, to to use it when I when I really started to you know get into the implementing these stuff. So laminated maps are great for just kind of again broad brush strokes, but when you're getting down to you know how do I build these earthworks in the most efficient and effective way possible, uh, th this tool is just just absolutely essential. Now I'm not going to do a detailed overview of all the different functionality of Google Earth Pro in this video because there's already another one up on from the field that goes through all the different tools like paths, place marks, polygons, image overlays, uh, you know, measurement tools, all that good stuff. But what, what I do want to focus on here is just my my kind of basic strategy for how I find uh, uh, you know good locations to build dams and swales in uh, in the landscape using these contour maps. Uh, and and uh, and how you know, on my property, and then how you know some tips about how you can go ahead and and uh, you know use these these same tools on your property. So to uh, to start off with, you, you have to. I'll actually turn off um, you know all the stuff that I've already done, so that we can kind of. And I'm actually even going to turn off my um, image of the the farm here, so that you can oops really start with a, a basic understanding. So this is what our farm looked like uh, about 12 years ago uh, before we started doing any of this, uh, this earthworks. But I'm going to turn on the contour maps and kind of walk you through how I kind of read the landscape and, um, and, and what jumps out of me right away. So one of the first rules of thumb in terms of placing a swale on your property is actually one that I got from Jeff Lawton and it helped me find the very first swale on my property. And that rule of thumb is this, find the contour line that uh, basically intersects the, the lowest point on your highest boundary. So you know, looking at this contour map here, we can see you know, the red is the highest part, the dark blue is the lowest part here. Uh, so you know, basically there's, there's um, a major valley that runs through the property here followed by you know uh, um, the valley sides on either side here so th the okay the, the goal is find the the contour line the lowest point uh so the, the the lowest point on your highest boundary so my highest boundary is this guy right here uh because you know, this is the high point so that's the highest boundary of my property and the lowest point on my on my property or on the highest boundary is basically essentially this contour line right here. It perfectly intersects the contour line of, uh, uh, of or the, it perfectly intersects the, the, the corner of our property. And so that was actually the, the very first, you know, contour line that I 
you know, basically traced that all across the landscape and, and played around with, okay, what would happen if I, um, if I turn that guy, you know, actually I'll isolate it here. And so the reason we're looking for that lowest point on the highest boundary is that this is typically the longest possible contour line on your property, which means it's gonna give you the greatest catchment possible. And, and right away, when, when, when that guy's kind of highlighted like that, you can, you can see there are some really good dam locations on that property as well. You know, there's, there's a little valley here, there's a little valley here, there's another kind of valley, um, valley here that you could build the dam across. And, um, and you know, also it, it, it just so happens that it is right in the middle of what's known as the, the thermocline, which is the, basically the, the mid slope location on a, on a property. Cause it's, uh, you know, this is the high point, this is the low point. So it's right in the kind of the Goldie, uh, Goldilocks sweet spot. It faces South and, uh, and you can see here, I'll actually isolate it again here. So you can see that it's it's right in just this really nice self-facing slope that's that's quite steep and uh and and uh, and one of the another really great rule of thumb that I, I came across years ago was in terms of identifying microclimates is that for every one degree your land faces south uh, you gain two days of growing season because hot you know hot air rises cold air sinks um, you're gonna have more uh, basically solar absorption, which is going to heat up the land more, uh, all this, this great stuff. So as a result of all this stuff, this is actually the very first swale that I built on my property. Um, and uh, I'm going to uh, 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 turn my, my images back on uh, so you guys can see kind of up to date what it, uh, what it actually looks like uh, today. Uh, and you can see, you know, that's where that, that swale is, right in that little Goldilocks zone there. Uh, this is actually an old image. I've since built this dam. Uh, I haven't built this one over here yet, but I'll turn my contour layers back or my uh, uh, my designs back on here. So I'll turn my swales, my dugouts, my dams, all this good stuff. And you can see, uh, you know, right there, uh, you know, I found my swale. Uh, you know, you know that, that was one rule of thumb, one way to find it. And it, it also happened that that, that boundary line was what connected up into a lot of other really good uh, dam locations like this guy and this guy. And that's basically it is like you, you're trying to find, okay, what's, what's the location that I can, I can capture the most amount of water and uh, you know, and spread it out over the, the longest distance and infiltrate uh, you know, into the, the most amount of soil in terms of the context of my property. You might have, you might have different goals on, on your property, but this is one of mine for our property because of the massive amount of, of water that we have flowing through our property during the spring runoff. Um, so th that, that's that's the, the, the basic gist of it. Here's here's another dam. Uh, this is actually the, the, the dam that we'll be building in, in part two of this video uh, that shows, you know, the 450 meter swale here, uh, followed by, you know, the, the dam wall and the 250 foot uh, dugout that we were digging from and, and bailing up on the, onto uh, uh, the, the dam and compacting that. And, uh, and this guy, I mean, you can just see, there's, there's a really nice ridge here and we basically just connected across that ridge. Uh, we made it nice and long so that the excavator could just sit on the, um, uh, it's only basically two, two paths wide or, or two and a little bit wide for, uh, for the size of excavator that we built with this 40 foot wide uh, excavation material. And, um, and so I just found that this, this is, you know, it was a, it was a really, it gave me good bang for my buck uh, in terms of how much water I could store f compared to how much earth I had to move. And it fit in with the rest of, of, you know, the, the layout of my property in terms of my other goals, like, you know, creating alley cropping systems where uh, I can, I can, you know, farm or graze in between these, uh, these rows of, of, of these swales. Uh, there's also going to be, uh, uh, you know, rows of trees that are planted along these swales. There already is. This is like a, you know, a, a six-year-old forest garden right now. This guy now is two years old and I'm going to plant the same kind of trees in, um, along, uh, along this swale up here into, uh, into the future there. And, uh, and so that, that's basically it is, is I'm, I'm looking at, uh, you know, where are, the, where are these pinch points in the landscape? Where can I build a really short dam wall that'll, that'll give me a huge amount of water 
um, that I'm, I can also you know stack into where a, a swale could run out so that I can I can you know capture runoff uh, with the swale, but I can also back flood from the dam out into the swale and, and do all kinds of you know, cool stuff like that that I've covered in some of the other videos about our farm. But uh, but the, the other thing I want to stress here is that, um, you know, designing a, a dam and a swale is one thing, figuring out where it goes in the landscape. But the, the you know, one of the, the systems that I'm, I'm trained in and I teach in is, is called permaculture design, which is, which is basically uh, the uh, a design system that tries to uh, uh, as opposed to focusing on all these different elements like dams and swales and dugouts and and you know uh, livestock systems and, and trees and stuff like that they're all they're all separate elements permaculture tries to focus on how do all these things fit together you know how do we how do we incorporate uh, you know different tree systems uh, or uh, you know flood irrigation systems or our our access ways on uh, on the farm here you know how, how are we gonna how are we gonna move through all this uh, um, you know all these different uh, you know systems that we've got on on the property here so this is this is is way more than I can cover in this video obviously but for folks who haven't you know gotten into to permaculture I, I highly recommend it uh, you know uh, my, uh, um, you know, that we'll, I'll be doing more, more videos in, in the future, but there's there's a ton of other great resources out there on my website, coenfarm.ca, as well as my, my colleagues, vergepermaculture.com, as well as our forthcoming book called uh, um, Building Your Permaculture Property, which really goes through our whole process on on how to connect your earthworks in with you know other elements on your property. Mm -hmm.